Anticipation was building for the jumps winter action. Paul Nichols had his eye on a 15th Jumps Trainers Championship, which would put him at the top alongside Martin Pipe with the most Trainers Championship titles. In the jockey standings, a three-way battle had commenced. Sean Bowen was coming off a magical summer, notching up 77 winners before October in a bid to get a head start on reigning champion Brian Hughes. Harry Cobden had also publicly announced he was going for the title and had already hit the target 38 times. Over at Seven Barrows, Nicky Henderson had outlined plans to stay hurdling with Constitution Hill. This had a knock-on effect with Barry Connell and Willie Mullins, who revealed Marine Nationale would go chasing, and to many surprise, Impere Pass would be aimed at the champion hurt. Although the autumn action was just beginning, we'd already been treated to five months of summer jumping. Willie Mullins picked up where he left off at Punchestown, notching up eight bumper winners in the month of May, including bright prospects you ought to know, reading Tummy Wrong, and the first progeny of his star mayor and 2016 champion hurdle winner, Annie Power. It's mystical power, bread and the purple makes the winning debut. Mystical power wasn't the only high profile debutant. Quivega's third born was about to hit the track and she left quite a mark. Aurora Vega, breaking the years here, has all angles covered on a race course debut. She's sauntering clear in the closing stages and living up to her billing. Over at Market Raisin, the summer plate was a thriller. From a long way back, Bourne Famous has now loomed to hold every chance. They're racing down towards the final fence in the summer plate. Three in line. Cortland over on the far side had the lead. Bourne Famous towards the near side. Back in third is hanging there. They've got another 100 yards to go. On the near side, Bourne Famous has a nose in front, racing up towards the line. Bourne Famous from last to first to take the summer plate. It was then time for one of Ireland's biggest racing festivals. Here in Galway, everyone's buzzing for the races. We've got all glammed up, our outfits are picked, and our shoes already polished. The going is great, the atmosphere is electric, and the stage is set. The excitement in Galway is off the charts. Race goers everywhere, chomping at the bit, ready for the highlight of the Irish racing calendar, the Galway Races Summer Festival. The decision to send Charger chasing as a 10-year-old was controversial online, but the six-time Grade 1 winning hurdler soon silenced his doubters at Galway. We, we never dreamt that we were going to go hurdling with Faheen to turn out to be a champion hurdler. You never know until you until you open the, the box and see what's inside, you know, so um, you, you can't tell. You know, the most important thing about a horse uh, is what you can't see, is what's in here, what's in his heart, you know, so your man's got plenty of that, I think. He, he really enjoyed himself there. Gordon Elliott saddled over a quarter of the runners in the Galway plate, and it turned out to be worth it. Ash Trey Meadow and Danny Gilligan on the inside, just in front from authorised art and Danny Mullins. But it's Ash Trey Meadow, the leader, inside the final 150 yards. Ash Trey Meadow is holding authorised art to go three spots better in the Galway plate of 23. Ash Trey Meadow and Danny Gilligan land it. You're 17 years old, you wouldn't call it a play at your local track, it's stream like stuff. Ha, I don't know what to say, to be honest with you, I just I can't really believe it. If you win these races, you know, it's a lot of prize money, it keeps you well up, up, up the table, um, it's great. In the Galway hurdle, we were treated to a great weight carrying performance from a Willie Mullins trained four year old. 100 yards to go, Salak the Brave by Mate Mozzie, Jesse Evans on the stand side, Salak the Brave has done it for the four year old! Normally a horse like him would go out to grass for the summer and we thought no, there's a big prize in Galway, let's have a crack, we might have a nice mark. Oh, the rise down on the outside of Desert Moor House. Listole's Kerry National was a day to remember for Martin Brazel and Ricky Doyle. Desert Moor House in the lead and pulling away to win another national for Ricky Doyle and Martin Brazel. Desert Moor House wins the Guinness Kerry National. Right, a uh, national winner for Martin is literally a dream come true. Racing inside the final 150 yards. It was an earlier return than usual for Ryanair winner Envoi Allen, who wasn't at his best at Gorham Park's Grade 2 PWC Champion Chase, but it didn't stop an old favourite doing it again. I think I've managed to win him 10 times, so that shows how consistent he is. <laughs> Going into October, Fergal O'Brien was leading the British Trainers' Championship. 
just under £400,000 worth of prize money accumulated after 47 wins. Milton Harris was setting in third on 250 grand. In the Jockeys' Championship, Sean Bowen was leading the way on 82 winners. Brian Hughes was second and Harry Cobden was third on 40. In the Irish Trainers' Championship, Gordon Elliott was leading the way with 1.26 million euros worth of prize money. Willie Mullins not far off in second and a big gap to third with Henry de Bromhead. The Irish Jockeys' Championship looked like this. Patrick Mullins was on 34 winners, given Willie Mullins' great record in bumpers earlier that season. Keith Donoghue was sitting high in second and Paul Townend was third. Jumps racing continued in October. Sharjah continued his resurgence with a dominant display in Grade 3 company at Tipperary. After a strong summer, leading trainer Gordon Elliott sent two novice hurdlers to Fairy House on the second day of October. The market suggested defeat was out of the question, but there were a couple of surprises. Redstone looks to have the measure of King of Kingsfield. We're on for another upset here at Fairy House this afternoon as Scraddon is readily upstaging the odds on favourite Shannon Royale. It was a whirlwind 12 months for Farinilli, having placed in a bumper at Christmas to winning a three-mile Grey One novice chase at the Punchestown Festival in April. That was enough to attract the money of JP McManus, but it wasn't the performance many were hoping for on his seasonal return. It is my design from Frontal Assault and Federnilli who are both trying desperately hard, but my design is the leader and very plucky. In second place is Federnilli as Frontal Assault has lost that spot. Another odds on favour has been turned over this week. The following race at Galway provided a bright novice chaser to follow and a change of luck for JP. It is Percival de Galwell looks to have all angles covered from Japer's Jack and never a dull moment and at the line it is Percival de Galwell. Yeah, he's done brilliant. Um, Jack was a bit slow at two in the dip first time and he just jumped his way to the front and he was happy out from there on. Jump, jump, grip, brilliant hobby. Following a lacklustre season over hurdles, Sarah Humphrey was hoping fences would bring out the best in Nickelback, who took no prisoners on chasing debut at Warwick. Nickelback, who's made the bulk of the running, jumped soundly in the main and comes home to win impressively. We've spent a long time trying to get him to, to just behave, really. And Tommy's Oscar making a fine reappearance here. He's a classy horse, Tommy's Oscar. Up at Kelso, it was an 11th win in 22 from one of the highest rated horses in the north. A day Racing TV's very own Bernard Condren was particularly excited about. That's all from Dan and from me for now. We'll see you again very soon. Yes! <laughs> Nailed it! Oh, yes! Back in Ireland, it was a landmark day for Jack Kennedy. Jenny Flex to Zetabyte, Coco Plum, Silver King, and Gladiatorial inside the 50. It's 501 for Jockey Jack Kennedy. Well done, Jack. You weren't long waiting for a number 501. Well done. No, no, great. In other news, Dan Skelton reveals My Drogo was back in training, with the old Rowan Chase penciled in before a possible tilt at the King George. Punchestown's season opener provided the first opportunity to see some of Ireland's household names, including three-time graded winner Zanahir. It's Zanahir making a winning start to the new campaign and the Paddy Power three-runner hurdle. Gordon Elliott's novice hurdlers continued to disappoint, this time with an entry grade two bumper fifth being turned over. And it's Antrim Coast who's keeping on strongly and is going to better He's second on debut for Inform Kitano and Gavin Cromwell. Tom Mullins looked like he had a bright one over hurdles in the shape of facile mode. If he jumps smoother, I'd be definitely going uh, Royal Bond. Hercule de Soy was seven wins from nine runs before putting his reputation on the line in Grade 3 company. On the run in, it's Hercule de Soy from St. Ethia, who's closing the near side. Hercule de Soy scrapes in. What's your feeling about the next step from here. Well, he's going to have to go there now. He's after winning three great trees and we'll have to see how he gets on against the real winter horses. Action returning to Punchestown was welcomed by all and a former Cheltenham Gold Cup winner decided to celebrate in style. Medellindo over the last with his prick from Hurricane Georgie in second who's running a stormer of a race up towards the finish. It's Medellindo the leader from Hurricane Georgie. Medellindo just like last season wins on reappearance. The definition of why jockeys love racing I think yeah to get to get to 
steer him around there. He was really good. You see that those old war, war horses like him go out and do that. He's brilliant. He, we've had so many great days with him over the years and uh, it's lovely to see him out enjoying himself. Over at Chepstow, Paul Nichols looked to have a new star in the shape of Captain T, who won on Hurdle's debut in the Grade 2 Persian War. The silver trophy went the way of Milton Harris and Pyramid Place. Also on Welsh shores, the Mian line continued a fabulous 12 months on the track for trainer Kerry Lee, adding a Welsh champion to her Swinton Hurdle win and Kelso Grade 2. Ben Brookhouse had made a fine start to his training career and in only his second season he was firing in the winners and this time unleashing an exciting juvenile at Weatherby. And I still have faith who came into this race in super form from the flat, wins here and gives Ben Brookhouse a double. I think he went through a, a spate there two weeks ago where he had six runners, six winners and eight runners, yeah. you know, so he's, he's getting them fit, getting them healthy and finding the right races. Mm. Back in Ireland, there was lots of hype around a Gordon Elliott-trained mare going novice hurdling, and she didn't disappoint. Rider days ahead, coming away to win by a wide margin, retaining her unbeaten record and opening her hurdling career with her, an impressive win. I'm looking forward to riding her in a, in a good race. Um, like I said, a strong gallop and something to aim at. I think that'll be, the, that'll be when you see the best of her, yeah. Brighter Days Ahead became the new favourite of the Mayor's Novices Hurdle at the Cheltenham Festival and all roads lead to that big race in March. Fresh from moving from Noel Meads, Beacon Edge brought up the double for Gordon Elliott and Jiggins Town Stud. Over at Limerick, High Class Hero put down an early marker for the Albert Bartlett. Down to the 10th and final flight, High Class Hero goes on. Not the best of jumps, but landed too clear from the long-time leader, the big Doyen, and it's high-class hero driven right out here. He wasn't the only exciting horse on the card as Gavin Cromwell unleashed a nice, smart prospect in the bumper. Clearing right away under minimal pressure, only by night, a new recruit for Gavin Cromwell. There was more national success for Gordon Elliott and Ricky Doyle, who teamed up to win the Monster National. But Jevray, driven clear by Ricky Doyle, is going to win the John Thomas McNamara. Ladbrook Monster National for Gordon Elliott. I've been going into gardens there the past two seasons and uh, getting plenty of opportunities, but just wasn't didn't have uh, much luck as in horses being second in that, but um, not a bad one for the first one. A former Triumph Hurdle winner made a successful chasing debut for Henry de Bromhead, but it wasn't without incident. Over the last of Felixias, burst through the top of it, Cool Survivor and getting another chance on the inside and rallying. Less than 100 yards to race, Cool Survivor and Quilixias fight it out. As they go to the line, Quilixias on the stand side, Quilixias. G great result, albeit not that pretty. And it's Rubo and Harry Compton. Rubo picked up where he left off last season with another impressive listed victory. I'm amazed how much the horse has improved and Paul said beforehand walking around here he thought he might have left him a little bit short but um, yeah proper horse, lovely horse. Fergal O'Brien unleashed exciting bumper horse go to war over hurdles at Exeter but things did not go to plan, paving the way for a big fish. On jinking there, go to war. Emma Lavelle's great run of form continues and driven out in the colours of Nick Musto. It's big fish, proved too hard to catch. Croke Park will win the opener for Jiggins Sound, Gordon Elliott and Jack Kennedy. Croke Park went to Gordon Elliott with a big reputation and he showed a glimpse of his talent at Clonmel. I suppose on that ground as a help, he's probably not a very fast horse. I'd say you'll see the best of him over a trip in time. So, um, but yeah, the way he, he picked up now um, was, was impressive, yeah. It really does showcase the sport in its in its finest, and I thought it did that again perfectly tonight. Yeah, yeah, we've had a, a terrific evening here. Um, we'll be back here well, before you know it. It'll be the showcase meeting in in October again. <laughs> They're off.
Racing at Cheltenham had returned with the two-day showcase meeting in October and it started with a bang. 18th birthdays don't get much better than for Freddie Gordon, who recorded his first ever Cheltenham winner for his father, Chris. Birthday celebrations in mind? Oh yeah, we've had a nice Indian or something on the way back home tonight. Gavin Cromwell brought a strong team to the Cheltenham Showcase meeting and it didn't take long before he made his mark under an ultra-confident ride from Keith Dunham. But it is my mate Mozzie who has simply breezed into the lead and racing up towards the line, Keith Donahue has not twitched, hasn't moved a muscle. My mate Mozzie in a common canter. Paul Carvey told me coming over to watch the video of Belvano a couple of times and <laughs> right, I'm like that. So I even thought when like I said I got there, I said, you know, I'm still getting here too soon. He'd be still giving out to me, but uh, thankfully we had enough horse left and he'd done it very easy as they make the turn in, and Tagman now muscles his way through. In Canto, Bruno had switched stables from John McConnell to the high-flying Gavin Cromwell since a tame effort at Galway, but he proved his doubters wrong with a facile success at the home of Jumps Racing. And now he shakes him up, he goes on by about a length and a half to Tagman, and then Mel Munro, and Canto Bruno gives Gavin Cromwell and Keith Donahoe a double, and in Canto Bruno again is impressive. Listen, John told me um, that he was a very good horse and his work was good at home, but I didn't, not to that calibre. To be honest, he, he shocked me there today. Have you got a long term plan for him, or is it just to see what happened today and then work your way after that? Or just find our feet with him. So, um, listen, I'll have a chat with the owners, Derry Kearns and Keith, and we'll make a plan. It's Jack Quinlan, and look away, clear by three lengths, and look away makes every single yard to take the Skybet novices hurdle. Look away, much the best. Neil King decided to run look away in a grade two rather than a handicap. A decision that was truly vindicated. Still, the start of the season is the best handicapped horse in England, um, which he was before today. But we'll, we'll have to we'll have to see what happens in that remark now. Um, but you know, is it, that was the biggest decision for today. Do we stay in handicaps and protect his mark, which he probably should do with a, a mark like that? But again, I just feel he's the best horse I've had in my hands. I, I genuinely believe he's good enough for a, a graded race there. Your dad has told everyone that look away is his favourite horse. Is he yours? Yes, definitely. What do you like most about him? Well, his markings are very nice, and he's got, and he's quite quick as well. Mole Course got the better of Midnight R. Fred in a thrilling finish on what was a poignant day for trainer Ben Paul. Ed Hoddle um, owns a quarter share. Um, it's owned basically by two wonderful families, the Troops and the Hoddles, and um, there's four of them in it. And Ed, Ed, basically single-handedly with his team built my new yard and halfway through uh, the build his wife fell ill and very sadly she's not very well at all and we don't know how long but hopefully this will have given her everything. The excitement around Shelton was too much for many including our very own Rishi Prasad. Well, I know often when we start these wrap-ups, whatever course we're at, we often say, oh, what a great day it's been. Well, this is very genuine. It has been an absolute... I'm not saying that we're not always genuine, but this is genuine. <laughs> <laughs> been one of the great you days. You might want to start that again. <laughs> Let's just be honest for once. Sometimes you have to kind of force it, don't you? If you say so. OK, but right. not today. No. Not today. Here's the final fence. Day two of Cheltenham's showcase meeting began with drama and a familiar winning trainer-jockey combination. The horse is up, Haddock's is Obo, it's dancing on my own in front by three. Triple Trade is running on strongly from the back of the field for Brendan Powell, but it's dancing on my own, the Red Rum winner. How's it feel to be back? Oh, it's great. It's a very cool place, isn't it? It's, we're delighted with him. He's very tough. He just needs sort of nice-ish ground and uh, and once he gets that in a good even gallop he, he's you know he loves that they, they seem to be what make him tick it's blue king to rue with the advantage here the holdings hurdle had previously been won by tiger roll so royal and i like to move it this year it went to the champion trainer and blue king to rue comes home to win the masters and holdings hurdle for compton and nichols a performance that had paul nichols dreaming big He's in the Great Wood, mm -hmm. then you'd look at Ascot, Betfair Hurdle, those type of races for him, and then go novice chasing next year at five. I think we've learned over the years to go novice chasing with the four-year-olds now, you don't get any allowances, pointless. So, you know, hopefully 
he's got to take on older horses, obviously, in handicaps, which, which isn't easy, but I'm sure there's a big race in him. Flight deck running freely. It was time for the first per temps qualifier of the season. A test of patience for Nico de Boinville. So flight deck making it a very early bid for glory here under 12 stone, less uh, Chris Ward's claim. They've taken the flight at the top of the hill as they run down towards the third last and it's flight deck with a lead of eight to 10 lengths here. But it's still flight deck that leads the way here by about six or seven to Highland. Flight deck jumped it well. He's clear by about five. Not a, a good jump from Moon over Kloon. Highland on the inner, Nico not panicking. Jet of Magic now under strong pressure, Judicial Law, and then Dubrovnik, Harry and Will have one, so Flight Deck is leading, but it's getting very urgent now. The lead down to about four, a look over the shoulder from Chris Ward, and waiting to pounce is Highland. Highland takes over to Flight Deck, Judicial Law back in third, then Moon over Kloon, Dubrovnik, Harry and Will have one. It's Highland in front by two and a half lengths to Flight Deck, Judicial Law coming to claim that one for second, but Highland has it won for Nicky Henderson and Nico De Boyne. Well, Highland wins the qualified. That would put him right in the zone for the final, wouldn't it? The, the mark he's going to be on now. Exactly. I was thinking you, you either want to win or come forward, really. But um, anyway, it's good. It's fantastic for our owners to be in the winner's enclosure here as well. Butch has now assumed command. Butch taking the third. Another advantageous ride came next, this time with a different result. So Butch is just ambling down the hill. Butch is leading, Ollie Murphy's Butch. Butch still led by a length, running down to two out. Listen to lad to try and get Butch, who is still galloping. In third place, Reverend Hubert, and then Antrim Coast, but Butch is trying to fend them off here. Inside the last furlong, Butch is in front, Antrim Coast is coming, it's getting there slowly but surely, and Antrim Coast coming to nab Butch, who fights back on the inside. But Antrim Coast and Keith Donahue pressed again by Butch. Here's the line, and Butch has nailed it. It's always good when you do it like that and uh, to be fair the horse has given me everything and uh, jumped great and he really stuck, stuck his head out at the finish. To wrap up proceedings from Presbury Park, fans were treated to the highly awaited chasing debut of Jules Stairs hurdle winner Flooring Porter. As they come to an open ditch and Flooring Porter just dragged his hind legs through that and Flooring Porter asked up, oh he was almost too brave there but he got from A to B. Despite a couple of mistakes, Flooring Porter's class shone through on a damp day at Cheltenham. Those that doubted Flooring Porter over fences, they've got their answer here all right. He comes home to win. First time up over fences, the dual champion stayer. The Porter is back. He never went wrong or anything like that. Last season just didn't go right and we changed around things and look at, we're very thankful to Danny all over the years, Jonathan Moore. Gavin, obviously, all of Gavin's crew, and Keith today was very, very good on him. Over at Kelso, it was a lacklustre return for Grand National hero, Corrick Ramp. Highland Hunter may still want to say, Elvis Mail is trying to cling on from Highland Hunter. Elvis Mail edges over to the running rail, but wins. I suppose on the um, what he's done, you'd immediately be a little bit disappointed, but he ran, didn't run any better first time. He never runs very well first time, so, uh, well, it hasn't for us. In Ireland, Paul Nolan went to Galway with just one runner, and he was appropriately named. Release the beast, wins first time up for Sean Flanagan and Paul Nolan. It was a smooth chasing debut for the Albert Bartlett second. It's Afferdale Fury, the leader from Favori de Sean Du, who's not giving up in second place. There's still a couple of lengths between them, and it's Afferdale Fury in the lead and holding Favori de Sean Du as Afferdale Fury makes a perfect start over fences. On the same card, Search for Glory put himself in the reckoning for the Albert Bart. Next is Magic Saddler. Search for Glory has quickly settled it on the run-up to the finish. It really is meat and drink to Search for Glory. At Aintree, it was Old Rowan Chase Day, and the field included Hitman, Tommy's Oscar, and the returning My Drogo. Hitman's dropped tamely away, nothing from Hitman coming. My Drogo's going to be well beaten, it would appear. Jetoil now forging on. Jetoil driven out to the line here. Jetoil in the hands of Daryl Jacob. Jetoil wins the old Rowan. I mentioned possibly to Ryan to Peterborough Chase. Yeah. So that might be an option. Obviously, I won a lot with Double Green in the yeah. past, so it's a race that I really like. Um, Top Notch was a, was a great horse for me, so it's a race that I really, really like. Um, but look, I'll leave that one up to the trainer. Paul Nichols unleashed another talking horse at Aintree in what looked an above average novice hurdle for this time of year. On the near side, though, Jaguar coming home strongly in the water side on the far side. 
Jaguar in the water side as Rich Spirit now, only now, starts to fade. Jaguar's in front from in the water side. They race up towards the line. Jaguar and in the water side, in the water side, on the far side, in the water side. It's easy for a horse like that to pop out yeah. and make all first time, but actually when you go to Cheltenham yeah. and Aintree, there's always going to be one that's going to go faster or too fast, you know, so I, I tried to teach him a bit. He had, he had every right to stop four out, put it like that, the way yeah. he ran around there. Fergal O'Brien had passed the £500,000 mark by the end of October, leading the Trainers' Championship. It was a fine month for Sam Tristan Davis, who had climbed to third with 53 winners in the Jockeys' Championship. In Ireland, Gavin Cromwell had put up a very good month in the month of October, but Gordon Elliott and Willie Mullins were breaking loose. Jack Kennedy sat atop the Irish Jockeys' Championship at the end of October with 42 winners. Keith Donoghue continuing his fine start to the season on 38. Subscribe to Racing TV's YouTube channel now to watch more great races like this.